Today we're going to be looking at functions. What makes a function and what makes something not a function. I took this picture in a staircase looking up the staircase, the winding staircase in the Arc de Triomphe in France and it was an awesome, awesome place to visit. A function consists of a couple different things. You've got domain. Those are the inputs or the set of things that you put in to the function. Your range is your set of outputs or the things that come out of your function. In a function, each input is paired with exactly one output. An output, however, can be paired with multiple inputs. Now, I know that doesn't make very much sense right now, but think of it this way. Functions are like vending machines. When you enter C1 and you get a Snickers bar, every single time you type in C1, you should get a Snickers. If you suddenly get an Almond Joy, the function or the machine is not functioning properly. So every time you put in a 3 into a function, for example, if the first time you get 7, every single time you should get 7. If you get something different, if one time you get 7, one time you get 9, one time you get 13, it's not functioning properly. Additionally, our building, we really like Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. So it's not unusual for the person who fills our vending machine to make multiple rows of Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. So you might press C1 and get a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup and C2 and get a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. That's okay if two different rows have it, as long as those rows only spit out those things. In my vending machine right here, you can see I've got two Cokes and two Diet Cokes. That's okay to have multiple ones there in case one runs out. In our vending machine analogy, they will never run out though, but uh, if you press G, let's say G1 and G2 and uh, H1 and H2, you're always going to get Coke for those and Diet Coke for those. If you suddenly get a Sprite, that means that Sprite was loaded in the wrong place and it's not functioning properly. Example one, we've got Miguel who's earning money at a job for working several different hours. We're going to identify the domain and the range for this function. The input is his hours, the output is the dollars. So while this seems complex, it's really going to be pretty simple. The domain is what we are going to put in. The things we put in, we put in 2, 5, 7, and 8. The range are the things that come out or the output. So the things that come out are the money that he's making. And we have 14, 35, 49, and 56. And that's all we have to do to identify the domain and the range from this table. Now let's look, go back to our functions. Let's look at which one of these is a function and which one is not. Remember, for every input you can only have one output, but you can have multiple outputs for each input. So here, let's go back to our vending machine. If I type in C1, I get a Snickers. I type in C2, I get an Almond Joy. I type in C3, I get Cheetos. I type in C4, I get Cheetos. That sounds good. So that is a function. For this one, however, this one's going to represent something that is not a function. I type in C0 and get an Almond Joy. I type in C1 and get a Snickers. I type in C1 a little while later and get a can of Pringles. I type in C2 and I get a can of Pringles. Since that typing in C1 gave me two different products, that means this is not a function. It's not functioning properly. Try this one. Remember your inputs are the things that you type into the vending machine. Your outputs are the things that come out. So decide which one of these is not a function. Pause your video now.
If you said that the second one was the function, you were correct. This first one is not a function because the first time through we type in C2, I'm sorry, C7, and we get 35. The second time we type in C7, we get 49. So that's not functioning correctly. Another way we can look at this is through ordered pairs. Remember, your ordered pairs are always in the form x comma y. So that's your input comma output. So for this top line, I'm going to input 5 and get 4. I input negative 5, I get 9. I input 4, I get 7. I input 10, I get 4. The second line, I put in 4, I get 6. I put in 5, I get 10. I put in 4, I get 8. I put in 6, I get 4. One of these is a function, one of these is not. The second one is the one that is not a function. When I put in 4 for the first time, I get 6. When I put in 4 the second time, I end up getting 8. So I don't get the same output, so it's not functioning correctly. Again, it's okay that in this first one, I have two outputs of four. That's like having two rows of Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. I type in C5, I get Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. I type in C10, and I still get Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. So which one is a function? The top one up here is the function. Example four, we're going to make a table for the function and identify the range. My domain is 0, 2, 3, 6, 7. So I'm going to put that at the top for my input. So I've got 0, 2, 3, 6, and 7. My output, or my range, is going to be what happens when I use my function, x plus 4, or y equals x plus 4. So each one of these values up here, each one of my domain values, each one of my x's, get put in for the x, and I'm going to type the output. So if I put in 0, 0 for x, 0 plus 4 is 4. If I put in 2, 2 plus 4 is 6. Put in 3, 3 and 4 is 7. 6 and 4 is 10. 7 and 4 is 11. So I've completed my table, and if you recall, the range is going to be your set of outputs. So the range in this case is just the things that come out when I put in those domain values. So my range is 4, 6, 7, 10, 11. Give this one a try. Same type of thing, I've got a domain of 0, 1, 3, 4, 6, and you're using the function y equals 2x minus 1. I want you to complete the table and find the range. Pause your video at this time and try it out on your own. Does your table look like this? Did you find the range values of negative 1, 1, 5, 7, and 11? If you did, Draw yourself a smiley face with a big giant grin. If you didn't, go back and try the other example and see if you can figure out your mistake. Your homework tonight, you have six problems. For the first two, you're just saying yes or no, it is a function or it's not a function. For three and four, you're identifying the domain and the range. Five and six, you're creating your own things that show for number five a function and for number six a non-function. Have a great evening and we'll see you tomorrow. Good luck.